Good morning. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for September 23rd of 2022. Well, happy Equinox, everybody. <sighs> Always a beautiful time of transformations. So if you are joining us here live today, please do drop your questions over in the questions tab. And if you are watching on YouTube or after the fact, you are welcome to join us live. Um, just go to twistedsage.com. At the bottom of the page is the sign up for the newsletter, which we tell you when we have our webinars along with the links. And with our newsletters, we also send out um, the tool of the week, which this week it is the... Um, Quantum Heart Coil Pendant is what is still the tool of the week right at the moment. And I thought I had one in my pocket here. I was trying to make my daughter wear it for a volleyball game this weekend. So Quantum Heart Coil Pendants that are in copper or silver. Pretty phenomenal pendant. Um, as a matter of fact, I just found one of my papers here yesterday of the original channeled information on these things. Um, and it just reminds me of how truly profound these are. Plus, there's been a lot of great testimonials coming out on these recently. Um, but yeah, it's releasing the programs of soul aspects. So the programs of you as you exist as a soul um, across the multiverse. So that's huge because... Um, soul aspects can really affect us greatly and um the releasing of not only the programs that stem from there but just all the traumas the experiences everything and bringing that in as wisdom and light that is really what the quantum heart coils and all the newer tools that are in the wisdom and alchemist are doing so hey christine from oz and carla from atlanta Minnesota, North Carolina, or North Carolina, Northern Cali, New York, Southern Cali. Um, <clears throat> hey, Renard and Connie from Maine. So well, I'm glad everybody is here. Hey, Nancy and Rob from Ottawa. Nice. Um, so yeah, Carla, Carla was asking a question here. If the replay of the Wisdom Wand webinar, um, we had an issue with the replay here on our Livestorm app. So now if you go to the twistedsage.com YouTube channel, that is where you'll find the Wisdom Wand webinar. And <clears throat> I still have that little bit of uh, stuffed upness that I had Wisdom Wand webinar, plus my mic wasn't working at that time. So my apologies on that webinar it isn't quite as beautiful as I anticipated. We'll probably redo that one at some point in time here. Um, so again, questions drop on the questions tab, if you will. And we'll go ahead and start with the meditation this morning, at least going into the heart space. So closing your eyes, if you wish. Putting your physical attention to your physical heart. It's been interesting this past week. I have noticed a lot of people who could not ground or did not want to ground. Um, you know, like one person, they just had an issue with Gaia from way back when, um, long story and it's not mine to tell. Um, but then, you know, a good friend of mine just didn't want to connect um, very solidly with Gaia because... Gaia, the earth, um, she is here in support and she will start to absorb, um, pull in and transform energies that no longer serve you, that you will allow to release. And um, there's just so many of us, well, because me, I a lot of times have a hard time releasing energies. For some reason, I like to hold them tight. I don't want to let go of them. Um, you know, 
whether it's because I've worked all those lifetimes to amass all that trauma and crap or what it is, or if it's the programs and belief structures. Um, so that's been what I've seen with a few people is, is that they don't want to fully connect with the earth, with Gaia, because it'll start to pull away all that stuff. So here we go, going back to doing the Trinity breath of connecting heart to heart with the earth and heart to heart to creation and just being in that space of softness of of allowing of the release of anything that no longer serves you your soul is always in charge so gaia is not going to come in and start removing things that you need to hold on to because right now there really is not anything you need to hold on to including identity so again, here we go, closing the eyes to connect into our own heart through this three breath technique. So imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth within your heart is your light, your soul's fire, connecting to that beautiful crystalline sun, that heart of the earth and breathing in that light, that healing supportive light of earth right up into your heart. Then connecting heart to heart to you as creator, source, soul, creator, God, which is you. Yeah, we won't get into a theoretical discussion, but connect in with that higher power that you believe in. Breathing in that light and support from source creation into the heart. That beautiful supporting guiding light. Now take that third breath of earth and creation into the heart at the same time. And you become this column of light where you as the here now person, you're the conduit you are the anchoring point, the grounding point from the light of creation and the light of earth as they flow together and touch each other and come through you. So it is this column of light that flows both from earth to source, from source to earth. And that is a beautiful thing because then we get to be those anchors of light as we walk through the day. And it moves the consciousness from the head back into the physical heart where we began. And within the heart space is where we go to where we're not influenced by programs, beliefs, the emotional field, outside energies. Only those who walk with you are allowed in the heart space in the highest and best. All right. So... Let's see, what do we got here for today? Um, I'll announce the upcoming tool of the week. So look out, look for that coming out this next week, which is this wonderful pile of mess of rings right here. So this too can be yours for 16% off next week. But I am doing the do-it-yourself Taurus kit instructional video and meditation today. And um, given my voice clears up, if not tomorrow. So by, by Monday, we will have that video for those of you who have already purchased that, the do-it-yourself Taurus kit. Basically, um, we use simple materials. We're going to go through. There are materials that you do have to purchase on your own, such as there's two different gauges of wire. Um, you'll need some pliers and a protractor. Otherwise, just some tape or ruler and a piece of cardboard. Um, and we will go through that whole process in that video of putting together your own Taurus and doing the meditations with each of the um, alchemist rings. And um, that way you can assemble your own Taurus. It truly is. The, the Tauruses are one of the, the most powerful tools that we have, um, you know, because they not only are they holding that energetic field that any tensor ring will hold, you know, they hold that tensor field, which is harmonizing in itself, 
but the torus creates a toroidal field, which is, you know, why we call it the torus, not the bull torus, the toroidal field torus, the tube torus. And that torus, um, because it creates that, that beautiful harmonious field, um, and it's moving and flowing, it brings other physical things into balance faster. Um, so because of that field, it's, it's, it's acting on disharmonious organs, let's say, or cells, and it is bringing them more into a harmonious state. So, um, let's see, dropping back over here to chat, seeing what's happening. So yeah, you guys are welcome to play on chat here. We have a lot of great people that are always on and can always help to clarify and answer questions as well. Um, so let's see. The next uh, announcement that we have is we have a wisdom wand sale going on on these full size wisdom wands where you buy two, get one free or buy one, get one 50% off. Um, we would love it if you were able to gift these out to people who can use them. Um, because, you know, even though our wisdom wand webinar was an hour and 45 minutes long, you don't even need to have any of the knowledge on there to still benefit from the wands because just having the wand in your space is going to start shifting things. But when you start to actually work with it, um, whether you're doing the meditation consciousness work with it and using divine awareness with this, you can clear almost anything in creation, either your reaction to it or it itself. I have not met a thing that I could not clear. Um, still working on this stuff. <laughs> my, my nose, throat stuff. But um, that's another story. And, you know, I won't get into discussions. So the wisdom wands are a phenomenal, phenomenal tool. So um, if you can, gift one of these out to somebody because it the, the tools really can make a huge difference in people's lives. It's it's pretty amazing just reading the testimonials. Um, so let's see, what else do we have? Um, let's see, and then again, the tool of the week next week is the do-it-yourself Taurus. Till the end of the day today, we have the quantum heart coil pendants and the wisdom one. So, <clears throat> We will go ahead and move on to questions. Um, I don't have any questions via internet today. I don't think. Let me quick double check. Mm, nope. Nothing came through. So well, let's see. Our first question, Victoria. Any ideas for using tools and tension to dis dispel smoke from forest fires and to lessen the health effects of heavy smoke? Um, you know, the... The, the tools that we like to use for working with anything with the environment are the tensor field generators. Um, some of these can have a sphere of influence of up to 12 miles. Um, but really what comes to mind is the rainmaker plate. Now the rainmaker plate is not just necessarily for magnetizing rain. Um, it is also, it's also that environmental tool that ripples out into the environment and you're able to place your intentions with there. Um, it really is a powerful, a powerful field that comes out of that rainmaker plate. And of course, too, when you do use that on the earth, you are connecting in with the water within the earth. And that is what is helping to do that magnetizing. And of course, um, it is also working with all the earth elementals. So one of the things that, um, gosh, the one of the simple things that I always forget to go back to, well, not always, but I often forget to go back to is the earth elementals. So the earth elementals that my sister Brenda channeled in, um, you know, like 12 years ago, 11 years ago, um, you know, are those symbols for the different <clears throat> elementals of earth, like Hedica, the consciousness of water or Plymela, the consciousness of wind. Now, wind is an energy mover, so it moves air, which is Kaleem. It moves fire, it moves water, it moves ether. So working with these elementals 
and you don't have to have the physical elemental symbols. But if you do go to Twisted Sage to the Elementals product page, um, you can read about these and connect with them. And working with the earth and the earth elementals is really a profound way to begin working with the environment. Um, we are such powerful beings. You know, I always tell the story about the 12 year old girl that I knew that could move clouds with intention just by connecting. Um, and when we start to connect with these elementals, again, you don't need the physical one. We sell the physical ones as a way for us to have a spot for our attention, um, something for the mind. But really, if you sit with each of those elementals, just go into the heart space and and feel into it. Um, just connect with them. Just be in the heart and connect with that spirit of that elemental. And then start asking them to assist in your local area by shifting the wind patterns, by bringing in the moisture. So you're going to be working in your local area instead of going out and fighting fires and clearing the rest of the planet and everything else. That's not where to start. Where to start is <clears throat> your local environment, your local reality. That's where you begin with working with that smoke and, and the, from the fires is you start to work there. And then as you work there, then it's just a soft intention because we always work from the heart. Then it's just a soft intention of sending that out to the fires from there. Because when we go in on a big mission to clear and heal and everything else, we're coming from here. And so we really need to be in that heart space to just create that beautiful space around you first and then offer that out to the rest of the, to the rest of the planet. Um, <clears throat> so let's see, uh, Renard, can we use the tools with sigils of deities? Would there be any type of interaction or amplification? So yes, you know, when you, especially with the alchemist in the wisdom energetics, these are bringing in that highest potentials, the highest consciousness of whoever and whatever you're working with, with water. When we use the wisdom wands or the wisdom tools or the alchemist sets with water, we are bringing in that highest potential consciousness of water, which is beyond this earth. And it is the consciousness of the water that comes in restructures water instantly cleans and clears it it is the consciousness of water that can clean itself instantly balance its ph instantly um crystals when you work with crystals and the tools it brings in that highest aspect the highest consciousness of that crystal and so that is the same with working with any sigil um or deity or um symbol you know a lot of the symbols anymore don't really bring in a lot of what their original energy and intention was just because we've shifted and as we shifted a lot of the old symbols no longer carry the same energetics they used to whether it's because they no longer are in support of where we're at or whatever the the reason is but there is they don't carry that same energetic as they used to. So a lot of the symbols that we use right now are ones that we empower ourselves. But yet there are like um, Renard, like you're saying, there are those symbols of the deities that are still connected to a consciousness. And when we work with that consciousness and these tools, we are ensuring that the highest and best aspect for the here now that highest potential is brought into here without any of the potentials that were good for one time, but not good for now. Um, if that makes sense. Uh, Nancy, I have some loved ones who have had the, the COVID shot. What tool could help them from the side effects? So, you know, just about, so originally my first thought is a wisdom wand running that energy but you can even use just a simple ring using a ring <clears throat> on that space 
So when you do that, um, it's all about really the consciousness work. We don't necessarily need the tools to shift, to shift anything. Um, but what we do need is we need to take the three breaths to be in the heart space. And when we're working with something again, when we start to give it power and battle it, we go back to the head. So we have to come from that higher space within the heart so that we don't get caught in battling, judging, everything else. Um, so if we use a tool like a single ring, let's say you go into the heart space, put the ring over that spot and you imagine going back in time because time is not linear. Time is malleable. We imagine going back to the time right before they got the shot. You can imagine putting that vial inside of the ring or you're wanding it. And then <clears throat> at the site, the injection site, just bring your ring or your wand to that spot. And just imagine as it is going into the body to harmonize it. You are powerful. Your body is flipping powerful. You can ask your energy, your soul, and your body to harmonize that at the very moment that is coming into contact with you, harmonizing it to you. And then you just allow that to move forward in time to here and now, and then you let it go. Because if we go back and we keep fretting and worrying about anything, we are sending that the energy of creation. We are holding it in creation and not in a beneficial creation. So if we, if we worry and fret after we've done the work and we still worry about it, we are helping to bring back a different creation instead of allowing it to come into this higher potential. That's what the wisdom tools do. That's what our consciousness does from the heart is that's all healing really is, is that we are bringing in a field of higher potentials and making a choice and choosing that that is harmonized with us, not choosing that this is going to be detrimental to me and everything else. We choose to be a powerful being and to harmonize all of that. Um, you know, my daughter, um, you know, and I, the story that I tell is about how my daughter who's 12 now, her, her mother's side are so, you know, they're very much into the Western medical model. And, um, you know, it really stressed me about, you know, having my daughter shots. Cause you know how many shots kids get when in their infancy. So Brenda insured me and she helped me, um, to run the energy into everything that was ever put in my daughter's body to make it beneficial to her. And so it is. And so it was, um, you know, I guess there was one thing that we found throughout the time at that time, it was a nebulizer that we could not shift, but I was a lot of, I was in a lot of fear with it, which is probably why we couldn't, why Brenda couldn't get it to shift is because I was in fear with it. And so we just never gave her that nebulizer, <clears throat> but everything else, uh, we were able to shift to harmonize with her body and to be healthful and beneficial to her. So again, we are such powerful, powerful beings in creation. And usually when we are up here and in fear and being fed a lot of outside propagandas, we then become the manifestors and the creators of that. Uh, Marie, what tone assists the rainmaker to produce rain? Did Slim Sperling have a CD that helped to produce rain? So yes, actually when Slim was making the harmonizers, um, oh, and I do not remember who it was that made it for him, but somebody had made him a, um, 
a CD that played these frequencies of rain and you, you don't want to listen to them because there's like these really high pitched mm, squeaks and hums and you know, it's, it's not, a, it's not a pleasant sound that you want to listen to, but it was the, the frequencies of a rain cloud. Um, so when you add <clears throat> frequencies, sound, light to the, to the field, um, it amplifies that. Um, but also it amplifies intention, you know, intention when, when the, when the, when the tools are amplifying and broadcasting that intention is just as powerful as a physical sound or a physical light, a frequency intention, emotions, you know, emotions do huge things. <clears throat> we see it with the, the Dr. Emoto's rice experiments and the water experiments on how emotions affect so much in the physical reality. Um, which again is why a lot of times we, there's a lot of outside influences that try to elicit emotions within us because emotions is an old way of creating and usually isn't creating anything beneficial. It is more about duality creation emotions. So when we can step into the heart space and we are using our intention, our consciousness, and we have an intention that way with the heart into that, that, that tool, whether it's a tensor field generator or whether it's into that field of the rainmaker, that in itself is more powerful than any frequency that you could put into it. But it certainly doesn't hurt to add all the other things whether it's a, a laser light or colored light bulbs, you know, um, all the different crystals. So maybe a piece of Larimar, which, you know, to me, when I wear Larimar, it's like this waterfall over me. Um, so there is a variety of ways that you can utilize, you know, these tools that broadcast to add whatever into them, but the intention is one of the most powerful things. Um, can radionics help to produce rain? So, um, yes, again, radionics would be simply broadcasting your intentions. Um, you know, and radionics, I still, man, I still suggest putting a tensor ring with any radionic unit because it helps to bring consciousness more into it. It helps to harmonize those fields because to me, radionics, it's such a mm, synthetic field. It kind of actually hurts. I don't like to be around radionics unless I'm truly in my, in my power and I'm, you know, and I'm standing in my own light, my own power. Then I don't mind being around radionics because then I transform everything that comes in my field. But if I'm just walking around unconscious, step into a room full of radionics, man, it just zaps me. Um, so yes, you can totally use radionics because it is a broadcaster, but again, add a tensor ring with it and your intentions, and then you can broadcast. So to me, radionics is simply a, a way to broadcast as is a tensor field generator or the rainmaker. Um, and they're all tools that we can add our intention and consciousness to because you can put your consciousness into there. Um, Nika, what tools would be best for harmonizing, integrating, and flying through the energies of solar flares and emissions with ease and grace? Whew. Your Merkaba field, that's, that's where I would go. Now you can use the tools and the tools are perfectly appropriate to use, um, you know, like your quantum heart pendant or any of those pendants that help to create that, that field. Um, you know, I say the quantum heart pendant or the, or the coils because they're creating that, they're helping to bring in that tube torus, that toroidal field around you, which is what this quantum heart pendant does is it creates a tube torus, um, a toroidal field. So basically it brings an energy flow that goes this way, 
both ways, not just like the earth at north south, but it also goes the other way and it spins in both directions. So this is creating a true tube torus, a true toroidal field. And when you wear this and it connects with your heart because your heart is this big electromagnetic generator, your heart too is that toroidal field. And when these two connect together, it just bolsters and, and adds to the whole thing. So, um, you know, you, one of the coil pendants, um, or the, or the tensor coil pendant with the infinity on the bottom, those are great for working with your electromagnetic field because that's it is that, um, the, the solar flares, things like that, they're, they're a form of electromagnetics. And so you can keep your electromagnetic field in a harmonious flowing way, which is what your Merkaba also does. So this is a card that we send out with every order that you get um, and just discusses what the Merkaba is. To me, this is a really important tool and the only tool that we can truly own as a human because it is connected to the physical body. And this produces an electromagnetic field and a torus, and it connects with the heart. So <clears throat> reactivating your Merkaba, even if your Merkaba is activated, you can still go through that simple technique of going into the heart space and just asking your soul. So you go into your heart space, you have the intention of activating your Merkaba field, and you simply do it. As a matter of fact, Let's just do, let's just activate our Merkabas right now. If you have not gone through the exercise, because we have, gosh, we have probably a dozen videos that we've made throughout the past 10 years or so, 12 years of doing the Merkaba activation. And um, some of them are a little long and, and everything, but it really is just a simple three breath technique. And you can reactivate your Merkaba at any time. And when you do it, it it's, it's kind of like a refresher. It's kind of like it resets the energy in your field. So let's do this. Let's reactivate our Merkaba field. We won't go through much headiness and it'll take just a moment. So the Merkaba, imagine it is that star around the human body. Um, there's multiple geometries that your Merkaba can be and your Merkaba can have all these different geometries to it. For visualizations and simplicity, just imagine that star tetrahedron around the body, that eight-pointed star. The tip is one hand above the head, one hand below the feet, and it's just right out past your fingertips. So that's for your mind. Now, we're going to take the quick, simple journey work into the heart space, and we're going to ask your soul to reactivate your field. So just follow me. Here we go. Closing your eyes, if you wish, connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that light of the earth into the heart, <sighs> connecting to the heart of creation, breathing in that light into the heart. <sighs> the third breath in this Trinity breath is breathing in from both earth and sky at the same time. And you become a column of light that's grounded and connected. Now, as you are in that sacred space of the heart, we simply ask the soul to assist in the activation of this Merkaba. We're going to take a deep breath in. And when we blow out, we're just going to go and we're just going to pop it right out of our heart. We used to call this popping the Merkaba field. So here we go. Deep breath in. Oh, wow, beautiful. So again, when we get together, we create this beautiful, safe, sacred container. Within this beautiful container was all these Merkaba fields popping. And man, I hope you all felt yours, if not everybody else's. So... It should be this smooth, harmonious field. If it doesn't feel smooth and harmonious, take the breath again. Make sure you're connected with the earth, connect with creation. And just pop it. Just let your soul pop that field around your body. 
Beautiful. Okay. Everybody who's here and will be watching, your field is activated. So that Merkaba field, it is an electromagnetic field. It can actually extend out about 50 feet. And 50 feet across. So imagine that field around your body, we can put our intentions in there. Some of the intentions that I like to put is that I am guided, guarded, and protected. I always am. But this allows the mind to know it. It allows your field to always transform energies. It creates that, you know, I don't even like to say bubble of protection, but that bubble of harmonization around you. So it harmonizes all energies that come in. Electromagnetic, dense consciousness. The second intention that I like to put is that I am, that I have clear communication and understanding with my soul. So all we're doing when we put intentions into this field is being in the heart space, imagining that field around you, either that big toroidal field or your spinning star, and just placing your intentions there. This geometry will amplify and broadcast those intentions. So that is one of the best and natural ways to mitigate any effects of retrogrades or solar flares or anything. Just harmonize them. We are the most powerful tool. We truly are. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nancy, a question. What tool can remove parasites, viruses, and molds? So parasites, viruses, and molds are all a lower density vibration. They cannot stand to be in a higher vibration environment, whether that's your body or your home. So any of the tools can assist us in raising our frequency and vibration, but so can the simple three breath technique to go into the heart space. So can the Merkaba activation. So can us just consciously connecting with our light, breathing in our light, breathing in that light of the earth, again, the Trinity breath basically and just keep doing the Trinity breath of just amassing your light. As you bring your soul into the physical body, it raises the frequency and vibration of the entire you, your physical, mental, emotional, and your creation around you. So raising the frequency and vibration is what you can use to clear any of those. And, you know, if, if you are not wanting to, you know, if you're somebody who doesn't do the work, um, I would almost say the divine I am tensor field generator, which we are going to be switching that one over to the wisdom here soon. Actually, it's already energetically, the ones that we have in stock are already energetically switched to the wisdom field. So the divine I am tensor field generator is one of our most potent for raising the frequency and vibration of the physical body. Um, right now it's listed as the divine I am, but it'll soon be listed as the wisdom generator. <clears throat> uh, Lizzie, would there be a benefit to putting the quantum heart coil pendant into a golden fire generator? Yes. I keep feeling inclined to hang it inside the generator, but I thought the quantum heart coil was more for personal fields. Wondering if it would project to others inside the generator. Yes, most definitely. Man, that feels really good too. So, and yeah, don't be afraid to play with the tools. And, you know, we were told for years not to give any kind of, to even say what the tools do because we do not want to limit the tools. There's so much more beyond what we put in our descriptions. So yes, this is for your personal field mostly. 
innately, but it can be so much more. So yes, dropping, dropping this inside of any of the tensor field generators, to me, is still creating that toroidal field that this does. And this is creating like that sunshine. And so it's like the two are working together. And yes, that is expanding out the toroidal field, the torus of the quantum heart coil. So yes, this right here is totally working with your environment. Um, yeah, that's, that's a phenomenal one, Lizzie. So please do, please do play with it that way. Uh, let's see, what would be the best to give as a gift for those holding on to false limiting beliefs? I'd say a pendant. Um, you know, if, if the person's not doing the work, you know, doesn't believe in any of this consciousness, schmanchness, mum, mumbo jumbo stuff, sorry, I can't even speak. The quantum heart coil is a phenomenal gift to give because, you know, and it comes in silver, so it can look like jewelry, um, you know, for a person who's not into the, doing the consciousness work. Um, the quantum heart coil pendants are fantastic for that. Um, and because they're small and petite and, you know, and again, like jewelry and most people will, even if they don't feel energy or have a sense to this stuff, they, they can feel the peace from it. They, they feel they're just like, oh, well that feels good. And then they just wear it. Um, so that really is a phenomenal gift. And plus it is one of the more affordable pieces, especially for as potent and powerful as it is. Um, so yeah, that, that is a fantastic one to gift to somebody, um, especially if they will wear, you know, a pendant. Now, if there's people who, who you want to gift something to that are just not going to wear a pendant or not going to do anything, the Divine I Am Tensor Field Generator, which will soon be the Wisdom Generator, um, that Divine I Am Tensor Field Generator is... <clears throat> is a powerful piece that will work on everybody within that that two city i think it's about a two city block or one city block area and so um you know there's a lot of people who are taking these to the office because everybody in their office is so dense and holds on to all their traumas and projects their crap all over you and everything else um so you take in that that wisdom tensor field generator the divine i am generator and you have it in the office, in your drawer, on your desk, and it begins to affect everybody in that entire space. Um, so it just kind of depends on what level you think that they would be willing to work with the tools. And of course, the Wisdom Wand is a really powerful, phenomenal wand too. These carry the Quantum Heart Coil and the Wisdom Wands, no matter the size of Wisdom Wand, it can be Wisdom Wand Pendant all carry that same basic field of of that transformation um so yeah something in that wisdom line or the alchemist line is is what i would suggest for gifting to somebody um let's see jr does the quantum heart coil have a more powerful toroidal field than the tensor coil um Mm. the the four inch tensor coil <clears throat> this one here um this one seems more compact and more um gosh i hate to say protective bubble but you know it's more of a of a of a bubble of a of a more of a confined Mm, well, confined might not be the right word. Maybe it is, but it's more of a weighted blanket. <laughs> you know, it, it's more of a, uh, it's working for those who are so constricted in their own, um, whether they're in their pain body or so empathetic that they can't be around people, things like that. The quantum heart coil brings that sense of comfort that they're used to as it starts to dissolve their own protective fields. 
And then as this starts to dissolve those protected fields, then they can begin to expand once they are in their light and they feel safe within their own light, then they can start to expand out where the coils are already expansive. So the, the tensor field coils to me are, they're, they're more lighter, airy, and expansive than the quantum heart coil pendant. Um, again, this is such a perfect tool for those who are constricted, who, who won't go outdoors, who won't go into, into the grocery store or whatever, um, or have jobs that are very tolling on them where they have to put up all these blocks and barriers like people in the medical fields. Um, the quantum heart coil is perfect for that because it starts to dissolve their barriers, but yet they don't really realize it because it's keeping them in this field of comfort. Um, yeah. Let's see. Does the current divine I am generator carry the wisdom field? No. Um, the divine I am tensor field generators that are all out there right now do not carry the wisdom field. Every one of them that we have in the studio as of the 1st of September carry the wisdom field. So if you've ordered a divine I am generator since the 1st of September, it's the wisdom generator. Um, and so that one, so yeah, that one, everyone that we've made since September 1st is now the divine I am generator. And they're, they're the same measurement, the same twist, everything. They look identical but they feel different. They have a, a different field. Now the divine I am is very close. The divine I am is the energy of the soul. And so really the divine I am is very close to that wisdom field, but the wisdom field is just, there's something more that is allowing to come through. And that is the connection to you throughout all of all that you are throughout this universe. It, it's cleaning and clearing and bringing in harmonizing all your experiences, bringing it in as wisdom. It, it is an, it's a tool of alchemy of soul alchemy. Um, so, um, we're just kind of waiting on me to go through the website and, uh, I got a lot on my plate and I just haven't been able to do much. I actually took off last weekend. Um, after I did the wisdom one webinar, I was in such bad shape. I just went home and slept and stayed in bed for 36 hours. So, um, anyway, um, I, I will soon have some of the different descriptions and names of the tools up there. Um, so yeah, the, the, the wisdom generator is what the divine I am is going to be from here on out beginning on September 1st of 2022. Uh, JR, do the rainmaker components have to be in the configuration to work? Or what if they're not assembled, but in a box will it have the same effect? <clears throat> so, you know, when we've, when that one was first made, I'll tell you a quick story. When that one was first made, um, you know, Slim's Rainmaker plate, and we were seeing that it was clearing GMOs. We did a fun thing of we simply recreated these, you know, the the authority template, let's say. the So we, we, we created them out of light is basically what we did was we took that Rainmaker and the entire energy pattern. We went into the heart space. We recreated that energy pattern and we would drive through Iowa and throw them out into the fields and then anchor a column of light to keep that energy pattern held there. Um, so using a column of light and that pattern of energy, we were able to put those mm, rainmakers, AKA GMO transformation plates all over these fields and towns and places all through Iowa. Um, so, because that's the beautiful thing about the Rainmaker plate is that that was one of the first things that we saw with it after the rain was, is that it was 
basically, um, which we put that energetics of clearing GMOs into every one of the tools after that. So every one of the tools carries that potential and possibility of basically taking a genetically modified plant or a seed. Let's say we start with a seed. And once we put that around the seed for like 24 to 48 hours, it brings in the original DNA structure through the consciousness of that seed. And then as that seed grows into a plant, it is no longer a GMO plant. Um, you can take this with seedlings and, and small plants and do the same with that energetic, but that plant will still be GMO, but the seeds it produces will be non-GMO. Um, so that's that was one of the beautiful things with that. So, so with the Rainmaker um, and having all of those components of the Rainmaker not assembled to me you can totally make that work as the energetics of the rainmaker but you have to connect in with what that field is so go into the heart space imagine that field being there maybe you could put it into a crystal so basically what i'm talking about is working with the etheric template the higher dimensional counterpart of those physical that physical configuration of the three rings and the four coils that are anchoring in that that third template um you know because we can bring in that third template but we have to you know so i'm picturing your box of those tools and you can just through the heart space and conscious intention create that etheric tool right there and then just hold it with a column of light. I'm not sure about putting it in a crystal, maybe. Um, so you can bring it into that little bundle of, of tools, but it's you still need to use your own consciousness and hold your attention there for that to be doing the work. That's that's what I'm that's what I see with it, um, but do play with it. Uh, Jennifer, will the Alchemist Taurus fit inside the Sitz Ascension Pyramid to be used instead of the Cosmic Sun Disk? No, no, it will not. Um, the <clears throat> the Ascension Pyramids, um, let's see here, are all made with that with the four cables that act as the basket to hold that torus they're made that very for that very specific size um, of that eight and a half inch cosmic sun disk and so we're keeping that sun disk as is that that torus we are still leaving as the cosmic sun disk which is the regeneration energetics um, Though it too has, it's, it's still brought in some of the more higher fields with it. You know, definitely the chalice energies in there and maybe some of the others from the alchemist. But um, that cosmic sun disk is, we decided just to leave it energetically as is for now. And that is the only one that fits within the pyramids. So, um, yeah, in order to create, we would have to make an entire... Um, different pyramids set up with that permanent um, cable system in there to be able to hold a 13 inch sun disc and that's something that we're just not really considering at the moment anyway though i would like to be able to figure out how to use the divine i am taurus because a lot of people have that smaller divine i am taurus and it just does not hold physically within the pyramid you can energetically use the um so so here's it to um jennifer is that you can totally use any of the tauruses that we have within the ascension pyramids and it will work energetically but it just will not fit physically in the pyramid so if you have your 13 inch um or or even your your do-it-yourself taurus your do-it-yourself taurus is still a little bit small it won't fit well within the the ascension pyramids but you can still use it inside of the ascension pyramids and it's going to be that um 
the part that makes it function that creates the spin because again the ascension pyramids are created with those certain components within them the torus being one of them um, uh, let's see, Nancy, do you know about the Tesla purple plate? That's to raise the vibrations to make one's food organic and very healthy. Um, yeah, I have actually played with the, the Tesla purple plates before years ago. Um, you know, at the time they were really fantastic. I have not looked or played with one, um, gosh, in probably like eight years. Um, I think I should still have one float around the shop here somewhere. Um, but, um, so yeah, at the time they were, they were pretty fantastic. And, um, I don't know much about them right now in the new energy, if they are brought forward into this newer energy or not, I, I'm really don't know. Um, and not one that I, I can't really feel into it at the moment. Um, but yeah, the, the the Tesla purple plates, like I say, eight years ago, it was it was really a, a fun tool to work with. Uh, let's see, uh, Carla, place an intensor ring, say the alchemist ring, around medicines. What effect will it have? Will the medicine be more effective or weaker? Okay, so thank you for that question. So working with the alchemist rings and your medications. Now let's look at medications in two different ways or two different categories. One would be supplements that are like the organic things, um, you know, whatever your, your supplements are and your supplements that come from organic materials, like um, let's say you're taking echinacea. Um, so when you put your bottle of echinacea within these rings, it is going to be amplifying the, most beneficial aspects of that echinacea is going to be bringing in the consciousness of that plant or plants. And it's going to be clearing out any of the non-beneficial components within there, such as any of the binding agents whatsoever, you know, whatever, whatever things may not have the, the highest and best energetics for you. Basically, when you put that into this alchemist set of rings, it is going to be clearing away anything that is not beneficial and it is going to be bringing in that higher consciousness of those plants when you're working with supplements as such. <clears throat> now we're going to move on to the concept of, of pharmaceuticals. <sighs> so back in the day, pre pre 2020, um, let's say just around 2020, let's use that as our kind of our fulcrum shift point that um, pharmaceuticals were non-beneficial because of the energetic component to them. Like my dad, my dad, when he was around, when he was alive, he had, um, he had Alzheimer's and one of the, he never responded well to any kind of pharmaceuticals, but he was given gabapentin and um, gabapentin was going to work well for his physical stuff or his chemical stuff, but he responded terribly to it. When we looked into it, we saw that there was this energetic field around him from taking that pharmaceutical that was from the gabapentin. All pharmaceuticals. So this is, again, this is not to scare you because this is back in the day. This is back when when as humanity we allowed the the whole duality thing we allowed it and we welcomed it in but the pharmaceutical industry basically hijacked the entire flipping medical industry and everything else and it was all energetic so each one of your pharmaceuticals would contain this field that was not beneficial um and it was the energetics of the pharmaceuticals that were bad. I mean, most of the physical components, let's say if somebody concocted something that worked with your physical and your chemistry and they saw it doing good things, that's, you know, that's great. But it was always the energetic component of it from the pharmaceutical, which was hijacked in the first place from the pharmaceuticals that energetics came in and was no good. 
So when you put your pharmaceuticals within the rings, it clears the energetics. It also works on the physical aspect of it to ensure that the physical aspect of it is helpful and beneficial. Like the answer, like the questions and answer that we did with the, um, with the COVID shots is, is that it will harmonize. So that's it. When you use these rings and you set the rings down, it is already your intention. You do not have to have the intention or worry to clear your, your pharmaceuticals or make them better. Um, just be in the heart set your rings down, set your bottle of pills there. And your soul already knows your intention because you have that soft intention when you sat your pills there. And so your soul is going to be the one that is in charge of the workings within this field of cleaning and clearing and harmonizing and bringing in all the highest potentials into the physical components of your pills or of your supplements. So yes, the alchemist rings are phenomenal for this. Um, I used to use when, uh, before the alchemist sets came along, I used to use like a 15 or a 20 inch golden fire ring and set it on top of my refrigerator. And that's where all my supplements went is within that ring. Because then also when you put something within a field of a ring, that energetics can come down into whatever it is that you're working on. So then I could just basically use that to broadcast the, the most beneficial aspects of my supplements into all my food within the fridge. Um, you know, that was one way that I always use those golden fire rings. But now that we have the alchemist rings, this is totally what I would suggest is the alchemist set it is our most powerful set of rings in that it is bringing in the highest aspect of the consciousness of whatever it is that you're putting in here water crystals supplements medications so again um the pharmaceutical industry and all those old things are only there for those who still are playing in the duality i tell you what if you are here watching you are a high consciousness being who can transform and shift all that crap you don't need to get caught up into the old stuff of, of the victim perpetrator duality, duality mentality, because you're beyond that. You're beyond that. So that's why I always hesitate talking about old creation stuff, because we don't need to focus on that and bring that back into creation. We need to focus on being here, being our own light, and then we start to shift creation as we move forward. Uh, Nika, thank you for bringing that question up for Carla. Um, Nancy, what tool would raise the, the food's energy so it would be very healthy? Um, I would say to use the, the home alchemist set. Um, it is a large enough set and it's a heavy duty set of rings. You can use the, the, the home water alchemist set which are um, these lighter gauge 10 gauge rings um, and I don't have you know I don't have a, a heavy duty alchemist ring on me but um, either the water alchemist set if you have that or else I would suggest the the actual alchemist set of rings the alchemist set of three rings the home set because it's large enough and it's larger than actually the um, the water set that home alchemist set is large enough that you can put your plate of food there. And it's that heavier gauge ring, which is more potent. And again, potent is simply being felt more in the physical. So you don't have to put your food in there for very long. Um, and actually, if you want to um, really get into bringing in the highest potentials of your food, again, I'll refer you back to the December 3rd, 50 questions Friday meditation of um when we worked with those water rings and we were able to bring that consciousness of water into water instantly to where it clears water instantly it um it um does the physical restructuring of water instantly not necessarily clears it it brings it clears it energetically and it clear and it brings in the highest potential consciousness of the water instantly to instantly um 
balance the pH and bring it to its original crystalline structure instead of letting it sit there and wait for a few hours. And so if you are using your alchemist set with your food, just go into the heart space, talk to your food, talk to the field, and then it's done instantly. It's that simple. You really don't have to go back to the December 3rd meditation and do all that, though it is fantastic. Um, but just simply being in the heart space, being that powerful creator that you are, talking to your food within this field, it's going to bring it through instantly. Uh, Christine, can I make a rainmaker with the four tensor coils on top of an alchemist tab that I haven't put on my phone? Yes, most definitely. So basically, you can use any size of, of the alchemist rings, of the trio of rings, and those four tensor coils. And, um, and that is what anchors in that energetics of the rainmaker. Uh, let's see. Can you spend too much time under a pyramid? Are the effects fatigue? Are the effects fatigue facing accelerated problems and issues? Would you face fears like initiates that spend the night in the Great Giza pyramid? Are your pyramids different in this effects from the other pyramids? Okay, so yes. Um the pyramids that we create, you you can never spend too much time in. I sleep underneath of my pyramid, um, you know, and we suggest that to people is to spend as much time within these ascension pyramids as possible. Now, the Giza pyramids is a different thing, um, as are the Nubian pyramids, as are any other pyramids that are on the planet, except for the Bosnian pyramid. Um, the Bosnian pyramid itself um, is what we replicated our ascension pyramids from that same energetics the 60 degree angles um because yes the giza pyramids can be detrimental um in in a few ways one of the ways that that i give as an example is is that when my daughter was like i don't know a year and a half um and we slept in the same big room her crib was outside of my giza pyramid on the north side of my Giza pyramid that I had situated around my bed. So I had a giant Giza pyramid around my bed and I did not know that the energy outside of the pyramid, especially on the North was detrimental. And that's where my daughter was sleeping. That only happened for less than a week before I finally was like, okay, something's not right. Um, and then to the Giza pyramids are, you know, to me, they are about holding physical third density, physical reality in place. That is the reason that I felt we built those pyramids in the first place was to hold this physical reality in place here on the planet. Um, where the pyramids that like the, the Bosnian pyramid and our Ascension pyramids are all about consciousness. And then that comes into the physical as well. And that's one of the, the, the components of the Ascension Pyramids is that Taurus, the regeneration Taurus, or the cosmic sun disk, as we call it. And that is all about bringing things into the physical. So really, the Ascension Pyramids is, is all about consciousness, and you can spend an unlimited amount of time in there. And it's beneficial. Um, so, and then, um, you know, an interesting thing is, is that, uh, on, I'll, I'll tell the story. Amber's going to be, Amber, my niece, is the one who um, listens to all these recordings and puts up all of the timestamps and everything. So thank you, Amber, for doing all that again. And, and thank you from everybody here. Um, but when we built our first Bosnian pyramid and Amber was under there, um, and she started releasing. She had to leave work and was releasing for the rest of the day. And that's when we put in the aspect of no time within these pyramids. So that way, when you do the work, the releasing work, it doesn't drag on. It is done in a no time space. So then everything happens with grace and ease. So part of that question of, you know, the, the 
fatigues and accelerated problems and issues and the fears and things like that. That does not occur within the Ascension Pyramids because everything is done with grace and ease within a no time space. <clears throat> uh, let's see, can I place the three silver alchemist pendant rings in my two gallon water crock to clear the water? Yes, now the, the alchemist rings, the silver alchemist rings are a sterling silver, which is, which is just fine. Um, the sterling silver, <clears throat> excuse me, is, what is sterling silver? It's like 96% silver and like 4% of copper and just a tiny little zinc in there. So it's that copper, that 4% of the copper that we worry about leaching into the water where you get too much copper. But it's very, very negligible. Um, you know, you would have to drink that water daily for years and years for enough copper to leach in there to be detrimental to the body you know i i know that the the ayurvedics used copper vessels for thousands of years but we still don't suggest putting copper into your water because you can get too much copper orally ingesting unless you are asking your body every day um, so that's why we always suggest putting them copper under the vessel or the solid silver in the vessel. Now, when we've used um, sterling silver in our water vessel, over time you start to notice every once in a while a little bit of that green patina coming out, especially on the solder points. So the solder points is really where, where you'll notice a little bit of the green patina because uh, the solder that we use on those particular sterling silver rings is actually 70% silver and 30% copper. So, but there's very little solder that ever comes out on those silver rings. Um, you know, because we use that solder on, you know, on all of our silver jewelry is that 70% um, silver. So with the water ring that we make, the two inch water ring, that one is made with, with a weld. We use silver on silver to, to weld that that particular water ring. And so there's absolutely no sterling in the two inch water ring. But again, in the silver alchemist pendants, you can totally put that into water. Um, just watch for and occasionally go through and just rinse it off, use um, vinegar salt or use a vinegar solution at least just to clean it off and then drop it back in. But it should certainly be safe, especially, you know, and unless you are using it for years without cleaning it off. Uh, Nancy, why is the Bosnian pyramid so positive where I've gone? Oh, so, so um, Nancy's talking about um, going with Brenda to the Bosnian pyramids um, energetically. So why is the Bosnian pyramid so positive? The Bosnian pyramid is not connected to any ley lines the Bosnian pyramid is, does not have a grid system on this planet where the Giza pyramids are connected to the ley lines which cover the entire planet. <clears throat> and so the, the ley lines that connect to all these different sacred sites all over the world, the, the, the Egyptian pyramids are kind of like the, the generator, the, the input portion, the, the spot that holds everything together. Um, where the Bosnian pyramid does not connect other pyramids or places or sacred sites on the planet. It connects interplanetary, interdimensionally to other spaces and places. The creator race, these original creator beings, ancient, ancient, that built the Bosnian pyramid, um, they, they, it's all about consciousness and it's all about working with the soul and it's, um, they're holding that space for, um, for human consciousness before human consciousness was even a thing. Um, so anyway, the, the Bosnian pyramids, you know, I have a friend, um, in the nice Templars who he goes down there. He's, you know, I think he's in his, uh, gosh, I think he's kind of in his mid to upper 60s. And he goes down there and hauls just five gallon buckets of dirt all day long. 
And he says that when he's down in those tunnels of the Bosnian pyramid, he feels like he's 20 years old. He can breathe good. He's just strong and just, you know, just running all day, doing all that physical labor and feels great at the end of the night. Um, you know, he's, um, he, he, so there's, there's a lot of those testimonials of people in the Bosnian pyramids for the Bosnian pyramids just being so rejuvenating and healing. Now, Brenda, as Nancy was asking, um, you know, the Bosnian pyramids is where Brenda has taken her before. So my sister Brenda um, was going to this pyramid under a capstone and laying on the stone slab, which is an ancient technology, um, ancient higher dimensional technology. And then there's beams that surround this. There's three circles of this um, on the outer circles. They're just holding space of these um, creator beings. And they simply hold the space for your circle um, and Brenda's circle and these other light beings that all are on those inner circles and these beings that built the Bosnian pyramids are on kind of the outskirts. They kind of freaked me out when I first saw them because they almost seemed, you know, almost um, like silhouettes and I could see their eyes. You know, I was like, wow, these guys are kind of strange, but they're, they're, they're wonderful beings and they are simply there holding space and, and holding space for their technology that they created way back in some of the very first earth realms. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the Bosnian pyramid. And so we basically brought in the energetics of the Bosnian pyramids into our Ascension pyramids. Uh, Marie, could I place the rings under the water crock? Yes. Um, so really, you know, I, and I didn't mean to scare you off with the question about um, using those those three silver alchemist rings by putting them directly into the water. I guess I just try to cover our own butts on saying that, um, you know, we say, no, don't put them in water. Officially, we say that because they still contain the slightest amounts of copper um, and other trace minerals like i believe zinc and so you know we we say just to cover our butts no don't put them in the water but really you can you totally can put them in the water but you can also put your trio of rings underneath the crock just as well um the reason that we made the solid silver water ring to put directly into the water is because when it has contact with the water itself it was clearing the water faster. But now that we have the alchemist rings, the alchemist rings are actually clearing it faster than what the silver water ring does, which is why we're also going to energetically update the silver water ring to be in, in that, to be the water alchemy ring where it is bringing in that consciousness of water more. Um, but yes, the rings will work just as well underneath of the crock as they will in the crock of those silver, sterling silver rings. It's just that it works a little bit faster when it has the physical contact with the water. But in reality, where you're using the crock, all those rings need to have contact with that water for is like two to four hours. And then it is physically restructured. Uh, let's see. JR, does placing a mini ascension pyramid under a massage table and doing energy work help with the instant releasing process since you have anchored it with no time, i.e. reduce the detox process. So the mini ascension, so any of the ascension pyramids, the energetics on the outside of the pyramids are really phenomenal. But when you get to the inside of the pyramids is where you find the no time space and everything else. And I almost think that it is what makes the inside of the pyramid so phenomenal is that no time space container that you find within the pyramid itself versus on the outside. So if you're working with clients, what we suggest is taking that mini ascension pyramid, hanging it from the ceiling. With any of the pyramids, so like just imagine that this is one of the mini ascension pyramids. The legs that come out, when you hang this up, so right down here and it's sitting on the ground, it's sitting here on the surface. And 
the the size of that pyramid is you know only this size right here you know that five inch square but as you raise this up these legs extend down into the earth so the higher up you raise this pyramid the larger the base begins to be on it so if you have an eight foot ceiling and you hang your ascension pyramid from that eight foot ceiling basically as these legs extend straight down into the earth and through the earth then your base becomes wider and then you are held in that no time space i actually know a lot of practitioners who use a pyramid above their table now most of them will use the ones with the longer legs and so then the person just so then it sits on the ground and then their table is underneath it here and you know you just kind of have to jimmy around the the legs to get in and out of the table but really if you use just the mini pyramid the 18 inch one and you hang it from the ceiling then it will the base will expand and it will be large enough to cover the person so the answer is yes using this uh using the ascension pyramid where the person is actually inside of the field is going to help with the releasing process bringing things into that no time space and allowing them to release without the detox um so it is so phenomenal if you are any kind of practitioner to use the ascension pyramid with your clients because it, it's just amazing um and you can also we will eventually get these back up i have not had the time to make the the ascension grid pyramid so they're currently still out of stock as are a few of our items i will begin to make these again so if you are doing distance work if you have any of your pyramids and you place it on your table you can just you know do something simple like you know you could have the photograph of the person or you know if you're into radionic stuff you can put their nail clipping in there or you can write their name inside of it or you can simply just intend that they are inside of this pyramid as you are working on them distance uh, doing the distance work and so you can utilize this you can utilize your um ascent your ascension pyramid your mini one that you sit on your desk and do that same thing as well um you can use the quantum grid points um basically with the quantum grid points oh gosh i snagged all my ones from sitting here on my desk um you know the quantum grid points only have like a two inch base so just putting you know the person's name or or whatever it is you know so that it sits right on top of there so that you imagine that they are inside of there so within the quantum grid points that little two and a half inch i think it is or three inch pyramid with a two inch base there's actually this golden ball of light that is inside of that so if you are using your quantum grid point and you're doing distance work with somebody imagine them being inside of that little golden ball of light that is with the inside of that quantum grid point so you can use it, even use that quantum grid point that field but again the quantum grid points are just basically putting that same energy as you find outside of the ascension pyramid it's not that no time space but again, you can bring that person into that no time space by having them inside of that little golden sphere of energy that's within the quantum grid point. Um, let's see. And yep, and so for the ascension grid pyramid, it is that same no time space within here. So this one, it's almost like I see that um, ball of light. So it's not like... Um, this one here, I don't see that if you hang it, that it extends. Yeah, maybe. The, the bases do extend into the earth, but down here, it's not really in that no time space. I'm seeing that there's this ball of golden energy right here around this space within the pyramid, which is where you'll find that no time space. Not necessarily down here with this particular pyramid. It's in this space right here, um, kind of around the coil is where I see that, that no time space. 
<clears throat> so having the okay so then a question from jr about using that pyramid um above them so yeah if you hang so if you have your um ascension pyramid and you have it hanging above you can take those three rings off of your ascension pyramid and put them below the person so then that just totally does encapsulate them in that field that's a fantastic idea um jr of having your ascension pyramid hanging from the ceiling taking those three rings off or if you have another set of three rings that's great too and putting those underneath of the person so that they're just it just makes that field more potent more tangible for them all right i'm going to jump over here to chat just to see what's happening uh jennifer the mini ascension pyramid amazing for distance work with it on the root chakra uh, thank you for for your feedback over here so i'll just read some of the feedbacks as we go um wisdom wand easily shifts food and water And some people just mentioning the Merkaba. Um, that was wow, light, expansive, connected. Was going to ask how to connect more to our soul. The Merkaba is hopping and bopping now. Boom, I feel those beautiful Merkabas. Good, I'm glad you guys did. Um, awesome. Oh, yeah, and then... Um, Somebody's talking about to using the um, let's see. Sorry, I'm just kind of I'm kind of reading some of the comments here. Christine talking about using a full size wisdom wand in each hand. I love that idea. Yep, use them in both hands. Um, yeah, I actually got one of those little curly wrist expandable wrist bracelet things that I wear on my wisdom wand a lot just so it's always like on my wrist so all right well everybody thank you very much for being here today and um gosh that was a long one we made it for an hour and a half almost today all right um so yeah we will um I'll work on that video here over the weekend of the do-it-yourself Taurus, which will be our uh, tool of the week next week. So look for that video to be up um, by Monday. And um, otherwise, man, just uh, enjoy. Quite the energies out there right now, and I hear a lot of people talking about them, but, you know, eh. My friend is all about, oh, Mercury retrograde. And I'm like, nah, just give Mercury the finger. You're bigger than that, which we all are. Um, we are such powerful beings. And so, you know, the more we just stand in our own light and our own power, the less and less mass consciousness creation affects us. And the more and more we can shine our own light into mass consciousness without doing a thing, but just being us in our light. So enjoy being in your light and we'll see you next time.